Hey everyone, I'm Justine Dorn, and this is my lovely fiance, Ron Rayfield, and That's welcome right. <laughs> to the front of the cabin. <laughs> That's right, we decided to be outside today, even though it's going to rain at any minute now, but it's, the weather is just so nice. The temperature is perfect out here. Everything is green. I live for this time of the year. I am not a winter person. I don't, I don't like it when things are dead. So whenever spring comes along and everything starts shooting up and the birds start chirping and the butterflies are all around, <laughs> that's when I go outside too. And we have fruit today. Yes. Yep. So uh, we're not about to eat shirt soup because we had a laundry video that came out this week. <laughs> um, so we just decided to have a nice bowl of fruit because, uh, Ron and I have been eating a lot of buffets lately, <laughs> and I think we need a little bit of a healthy yeah. break. <laughs> like three times a week, and too I, much. <laughs> yeah, and I guarantee you that we are going to demolish this plate of strawberries and blackberries because I can eat this all by myself. I love fruit. Well, you better hop on it because I'm already started. Okay, we're going to put the strawberry tops in this empty bowl right here. And we'll give them to the chickens. Yeah, they can eat that. Well, there's the first one. Well, hey, right off the bat, I gotta thank all of y'all who came to Pioneer Days this past weekend mm -hmm. down here in St. Genevieve. We've had almost 2,000 people and it was awesome. It, it was, was the biggest turnout yet. We had the yeah. most participants and everybody seemed to have a really good time. And the weather held out, which was mm -hmm. really important because it was supposed to rain the but whole weekend. And last minute it changed and it did not rain. Right. It was a little hot, but. We, yeah. we managed. <laughs> we managed. It seems like Pioneer Days is the signal for when the hot time of the year starts. I know. It's like, okay, it's Pioneer Days. It's officially they, summer. They flip this thing, this modern thing called a switch. You might have heard of it. <laughs> and uh, it suddenly makes it get really, really hot outside. So this is the third annual Pioneer Days that we've had. The third year in a row that we've done it. And we're trying to make this happen every year as <laughs> long as we possibly can. And it's always going to be on the first weekend of May. Mm -hmm. We've decided this year, since the dates change every year, obviously, well, the weekends don't. So the first weekend of May is for now and forever going to be uh, Pioneer Day. So this mm -hmm. count on that. Yep, already start planning. We've had people that visit us from California, from yeah. Arizona, Oklahoma, Florida, There's Texas. A, there was <laughs> one couple who was in their RV. They were coming from Florida and they were going to drive all the way up to Alaska whoa that is a lot of driving whoa i couldn't imagine driving that far i've i've driven cross country before with before i met justine i traveled for motocross and did uh media and photography and video stuff but i've never could imagine driving from one tip of the continent all the way to the other tip you know they say the journey is more amazing than the destination sometimes i think, I think in this case it's definitely going mm -hmm. to be because you're going to yeah. see a lot of but stuff the journey is gonna be incredible for them <laughs> they said they were going uh up through montana and then crossing into canada and then from there going somewhere <laughs> but it's gonna i'm sure the scenery is beautiful mm -hmm. up there we got these mugs from pioneer days yes we had a potter come down tom from mm -hmm. tomcat pottery he's from uh, webster groves st louis mm -hmm. and i will put a link in the description for his pottery he has an etsy store and yeah. he did a fantastic job unfortunately he was only able to come on sunday he really wanted to come down Saturday, but uh, he said he had a good time on Sunday, and uh, people people really like this stuff, and I, I love blue. Coincidentally, she bought the one I wanted, so I got yep. the short one, but that's okay. I went in there first, and there was maybe 50 things laying out on the table, and half of them were blue, the same glaze, and there's black on the bottom because he says he used Kentucky black clay. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw this mug, and had my name all over it so I got it and I bring it back to our tent and Ron says that's the one I wanted from all the ones of course we think you know they say twisted yeah. or is it great minds think alike great minds think alike <laughs> twisted minds think alike <laughs> so it, it was a huge success mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that brings me to my next little subject here I have some books the guy who's going to marry us whenever we do get married is a real-life preacher and a, um, a historical reenactor and he was at pioneer day selling his books his name is jeff baggett yeah he's an ordained preacher he's a minister in real life but also a reenactor mm -hmm. he has seven books in this series here that he he's just released his seventh book 
But this is his first book. I bought this last year. This is Brothers and Warriors by Jeff Baggett. And it talks about the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. And then this past week at Pioneer Days this year, I got this one from him. This is about Squire Boone and his family's journey from North Carolina to Kentucky. Now, who's Squire Boone, you might ask? Well, that's, that's your great, great, great grandpa. Yes. So <laughs> my relation to the famous Daniel Boone is Daniel Boone is my sixth or seventh great uncle but his brother squire boone that nobody seems to hear about really he he, he gets covered up by the successes of his brother oh, his brother yes but he is my some odd great grandfather but uh turns out squire was there right alongside right alongside daniel throughout most of all the things that daniel's known for and so your great is it your great grandma or your great great grandma her last name is boone great great his great great grandma her last name was Boone. And then you can trace it back from there, and Squire ends up being my grandfather, which is mm -hmm. Daniel Boone's brother. Uncle so, Daniel! Yeah, so that means that <laughs> Daniel Boone is your great, 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 great uncle. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's really incredible. But be sure to check out uh, him. I'll put a link to, to his stuff, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe he has his, like an author's website or something. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the link. But uh, his books are very detailed. Um, I, and I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a horrible reader. It's hard for me to keep my attention in a book. I like to read magazines because they have short descriptions. And I'll read every word. And pictures. And I really <laughs> struggled with the bigger book last year. And I told him this. And I, and I said, after reading this little one, I'm halfway done with this in one week. It, I, I've been able to focus my mind and picture everything that I'm reading because it's so descriptive that I'm actually going to start this one over. I only made it about a third of the way in this one, and from just stopping and going and stopping and going, I've, I've kind of forgotten what it was about. So as soon as I'm done with this one, I'm going to pick this one back up. I'm really proud of you, Ron, for taking on reading because I know that reading is difficult for you. I just so I'm really proud of you for forcing yourself to use you. your mind thank to get you. into it. I I <laughs> like books. I just it's I almost have to use my finger because I'll I'll lose my spot mm. if I stare at something for so long. It just right. I don't know. Yeah, you know some people their minds are like that. But you're very good at math. I love math. Math so is fun. We can't all be <laughs> good at everything. Um, that's why everyone kind of specializes in a certain individual thing. So maybe you think that reading isn't your strong suit, but that's perfectly fine because you're excellent at so many other things. <laughs> well, thank you. And anyone else <laughs> watching this out there too, don't think you have to be perfectionist at everything you right. do because that's ridiculous. It's impossible. I, I guarantee to you that Albert Einstein couldn't do deep sea welding. <laughs> You know, but he was, <laughs> but he was still an amazing mathematician. Yeah. <laughs> so just because you you can't excel in everything, it doesn't mean you're dumb or anything even close to that. You just pick an area and you focus on it. What she said. <laughs> so thank you again, everyone who came down to our third annual Pioneer Days. Saturday was the busy day. It, at any two-day event, it's always Saturday. Oh, yeah. We probably had mm. a little over 1,500 people on Saturday alone mm -hmm. and maybe three to 500 people on Sunday. And the music, the music was so fun. We, we had the drum and fife people come down that we have met about a month ago at a small event, and I played some music with them, and that was really enjoyable. I think we did four or five songs, and uh, they're going to be back down for the 4th of July to march with us and participate in the ceremony with the music so that's gonna be really neat which that, is another event that you're putting on yes <laughs> we are putting on it is the 212th saint genevieve independence day celebration the first independence day that was celebrated in saint genevieve was in the year 1811. Hmm. now we have already sworn our allegiance to the united states before then hmm. but the the first recorded in history like you know on paper that it was 1811 yeah probably the first organized gathering yeah of many like sure you can celebrate it in your backyard but this is the first organized town gathering right it was in 1811 because in the late 1770s and early 1780s when uh, George Rogers Clark came to Kaskaskia which is right across the river from St. Genevieve uh, you know people in this area were already acknowledging the United States of America and you know 
participating in things for us, like fighting in the Battle of Fort San Carlos in 1780, you know, hmm. for American independence. So mm -hmm. um, it was nothing new by 1811. So Ron is organizing that 4th of July celebration in St. Genevieve. And this is a call to anybody who would like to come and participate in that, whether you be reenactor or not. Um, I would ask if, if you if you have a flag that you can bring, please bring a bring an American flag and march with us. And if you're Civil War, World War II, um, 1812, Rev, Rev War, <laughs> or active military, or a veteran here recently in yes. the recent wars, please come. Um, you know, <laughs> Vietnam. You know, if if you got your old your old jacket and it still fits, bring it. Wear your hat. It says <laughs> says what you what ship you were on, or or you know when you served. We would be glad to to see that. Yes, we would. We're, we're going to try to have hot dogs and beer uh, in the park, like a beer wagon. Traditional 4th of July yes. American celebration. Now that's here. not set in stone yet. They're going to set that in stone in about two weeks for me. And then mm -hmm. I will be able to tell you guys that part for sure. But uh, the rest of it is going to be um, a good patriotic time. We're going to have music. We're going to have speeches. Uh, we're going to read the Declaration of Independence. Do all of the uh, patriotic things that, we should, that make us proud to be an American. Yep, that's right. Now, the culture of the 4th of July, getting together, drinking, having barbecues, that is not a modern thing. <laughs> Actually, in our no. time period, that is how they celebrated the 4th of July, was getting together, drinking, shooting guns, and barbecues. <laughs> barbecues, So yes. it hasn't changed in 200-something years, really. I just think that's so cool. <laughs> Some traditions are very good, and mm -hmm. that's one of them. But hey, speaking of uh, history, we're going to get into this week in history topics. We got actually quite a few here. I think I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got Let's do seven. it. This week in history. History. Hey, kitty. Come here, Mish Mish. Oh, hi, Mish Mish. He said it was time for the history facts. Come on. <laughs> come here, buddy. Come here. You want to come here and read the history with me? Come here. I don't think he's attracted by the strawberries much. <laughs> oh, I got him. I got him. I got you. Hey, kitty. Meow, meow, meow. Hey. Say hello, America. I'll hello. pet him with my non-strawberry eating hand. <laughs> Hi, kitty. All right, you want to read the first one with me, Mish Mish? Okay, Mish Mish. All right, so this week in history. We're teaching him how to read and write. <laughs> it's not going so well. No. <laughs> May 14th in 1607, the, the English colonists established James Fort, which would become Jamestown, which is the earliest <laughs> permanent English settlement here in the New World. That's 1607. 1607 Jamestown yeah. was established. Wow. Way, way, way back. That does go pretty far back. <laughs> <laughs> My next one uh, for the same day, May 14th, 1804, mm -hmm. William Clark and 42 men depart from Camp Dubois to join Meriwether Lewis at St. Charles, mm -hmm. Missouri, marking the beginning of the Lewis Clark expedition. Yeah. Oh, I just had a little burp. Sorry. She burping. <laughs> The strawberries make me burp. Now you know about Lewis and Clark. You used to work at the yeah. museum. Center, I wor I worked at the Lewis and Clark Center in Hartford, Illinois, for five years. <laughs> he's thirsty. For he's some sh he's shedding right now because uh, summer's coming. So his fur is just coming off like crazy. No, that's my berries. You can't eat my berries. <laughs> Lay down. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Lay down. Good kitty. Good mish mish. We got him trained. Yeah, he actually comes when we call his name. He'll run out of the woods. <laughs> he knows his name. When we say stay, he stays. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. For a cat, he's real smart. So, don't mind me if I'm just pulling this fur <laughs> off of him. Well, shall I continue? Yes. Okay. Let's see if he wants to eat the strawberry pieces. Uh, I don't think so. He's sniffing it. Yeah, he's thinking... He's, he's like, what is this? He's like, is there any meat under the berries? It looks like meat. <laughs> it does. <laughs> All right, so May 16th, <laughs> 1771, the Battle of Alamance, the pre-revolutionary war battle between local militia groups uh, called the Regulators. Mm. So if you've seen Outlander, you'll know who the Regulators are. Mm. Now, we didn't learn about them in school. We only learned about the Sons of Liberty, and that took place up in New England before the Revolutionary mm. War. But right before the Revolutionary War in the southern colonies were the Regulators, and they were mostly the Jacobites who came from Scotland to the New World. Interesting. Yes. S Scottish immigrants to America. Mm -hmm. All right, so my next one is also from May 16th, 1842. The first major wagon train um, leaves for the Pacific Northwest for the, 
known as the Oregon Trail, mm -hmm. uh, leaves from El Elm Grove, Missouri with a hundred pioneers. It left from Missouri? They left from Missouri. I had no idea until I read that. I would not have guessed Missouri. <laughs> I wouldn't have either. <laughs> I, you always picture a little house on the prairie. Like Kansas yeah. or Nebraska yeah. somewhere. And people always ask us, they're like, are you guys like little house on the prairie? That's like 50 years in the future. That's now. <laughs> really not our time period at all. <laughs> we're, we're closer to the American Revolution than we are the the you know the victorian 18 yeah little house on the prairie i don't know exactly exactly when the story set but i'm assuming it's like the 1890s maybe probably something like that we do more uh i we focus on 1790 to 1825 yeah so some of the mm -hmm. founders are still alive in the time period that we are mm -hmm. thomas jefferson's still alive john adams yeah. is still alive yeah so i mean I, I I get it. We're wearing you know rustic clothes. There's a what? There's a cabin, but different time. <laughs> Completely different time. <laughs> get away from my berries, boy! These are my berries. Okay, that's what. Oh I'm wow, like. he's just dominating. <laughs> well, just this take table. the whole thing. Why don't you? He knows that people are here just <laughs> to watch him. Okay, so here's a fun <laughs> one. On May 16th, 1866, the United States Congress establishes the nickel. Get away from my berries! These are my berries. A nickel, a five cent nickel. <laughs> Oh, okay. They, what year was that? That was in 1866. 1866. Yes, after the Civil War. Hmm, the first nickel. The first nickel. That's Five interesting. Cents. And my next one is May 17th, 1673. I'm going to butcher their names. Louis Jolette and Jack Jacques Marquette began exploring <laughs> the Mississippi River. So oh. they, they were from, they came down from Canada. They were French explorers. Hmm. They came down the Mississippi River. In 1673. You can't have the whole table. <laughs> That's a very long time before Lewis and Clark. <laughs> there. And then my last one for this week is May 20th, 1873. Levi Strauss um, gets the patent for the blue jeans. For blue jeans. Oh, what year? 1873. 1873 blue jeans are patented. Yep. Now, they actually did have denim long before this. They Even did. in the 18th century, there was denim. Yeah. But blue jeans? Yeah, with the copper rivets and that's, all that. That's a completely mid-1800s Victorian invention. Yes. yes. They, they had the pockets, and it's completely different yeah. than the pants that were mm -hmm. uh, that they had already. So can you imagine Victorian woman in denim jackets? Well, you should, because we're about to put up a picture of a Victorian denim jacket. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for uh, this week in history. So I do have one more thing to mention. The coloring books. We sold quite a few at Pioneer Days, and I have quite a few left, actually. And so if you guys would like one of the coloring books that we've described here on the channel, I don't know, a, a month ago, they are $8 if you just mail me uh, eight dollars, whether it be a check or cash, I will send it out to you immediately. And uh, Ron made those coloring yes, books by hand. We printed them and we punched the holes and we hand stitched mm -hmm. them right here in St. Genevieve, Missouri. That's right. So if you want one, uh, send Ron Rayfield eight dollars in person. They're five dollars. Yes, in but, person they're five dollars. Uh, to cover shipping charges, we put three extra dollars on there. That's our retirement plan right there to sell Ron's <laughs> coloring books and we can retire tomorrow. <laughs> All proceeds go towards the new home build that we're doing. Yes, the so new home build. Every little bit helps. And, yes. and it's a fun book. It, it's educational and, it, and it's fun. Yes. But uh, we, we had adults and kids buy them at Pioneer Days. Yeah, just clean yourself right there, buddy. <laughs> Look at his foot! His foot is in the fairy I'm bowl! I'm glad that's the discarded part. Right. At least he isn't licking his butt like he usually does. Come back in five minutes. He'll probably, bit. he'll probably, he's moving his way down. <laughs> <laughs> he'll get there eventually. But hey everybody, uh, we're gonna hop off here. So we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much again for coming out to Pioneer Days last weekend. Uh, we, we really appreciate it all. We appreciate all you watching the channel here and over on Early American. Yeah, it was really fun meeting you guys at Pioneer Days. I'm so honored to have met all of you. Some of you that came from really far away, that just completely blows my mind. And yes. I really hope that you not only had a good time at Pioneer Days, but also visiting our town for the very first time. Yes. 
So thank you guys so much. We will see you next time. I think we'll have a cooking video next week. I hope so. I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> well, you got to wait a whole week before I feed oh, you. Man. Okay, <laughs> y'all. Take care. We'll see you soon. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.